the Lord is trying to ignite your praise on today. Amen. We're going to get into the word of the Lord for a few minutes on today. In the book of Genesis, chapter 14 and verse, chapter 41 and verse 14. Just one pastor scripture there. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. and They brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his garment and came in unto Pharaoh. Isaiah 61 verse one, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. Here it is right here, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. May the Lord continue to bless the wonderful word that he has already blessed. Today I want to talk to you for little while about the garment of praise the garment of praise God bless you on today amen the garment of praise our theme for the month amen God bless our ushers amen um, our theme for the month is telling us not to give up but to believe so to shorten my subject today, I just put down the garment of praise, but I just want to add on to that, don't give up. You must put on the garment of praise. Do not give up. You must put on the garment of praise. And I want to just say here that down through the years, I have often spoke about how we don't want to just be emoting or just look to emote or be emotional when we come into the house of the Lord because there's not a lot of power in just emoting. Um, but sometimes we, we hear something such as you don't just want to be emotional and so we don't give any kind of emotion or we don't do any kind of emoting but in order to praise the Lord there has to be some action there has to be something that is taking place and sometimes or often your next level of blessing is hidden in your next praise I said your next level of blessing often or can be embedded or hidden in your next praise. El Hess, what, 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 what are you saying? I'm saying that if you would just give the Lord your best praise, you might find some healing in that. You might find some deliverance in that. You, you just might find some breakthrough. God has a way of hiding what he has for you, and he wraps it up. I remember years ago I saw where there was a gorilla that uh, needed some vitamins and uh, when they tried to give the uh, gorilla the vitamins the gorilla would not take the vitamins so what they did was they put the vitamins inside of bananas amen praise God and he was eating bananas and thought he was eating bananas but he was not just eating bananas but he was getting his vitamins Sometimes God will hide your next breakthrough or your next deliverance, your next place of breakthrough in your praise. But you have to, first of all, 
put on the garment of praise. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I wish I could help, help somebody on today. I'm going to do my best to try to help somebody on today. Uh, some blessings are exposed and some blessings are hidden. There are some things that God does. And uh, he says, if you will do this, if, if, if. The word if is said to be one of the most powerful words in the English language. If thou canst believe, if, if is predicated upon the if. And if we learn how to obey God and do what the word of God has told us, uh, our blessing could be in our next praise. The garment of praise is something that you must believe in before you can put it on so you can get to the next level of blessing. If you don't believe in the garment of praise, you must first believe before you receive. We talked about that in our early service. Before you can receive, many times people want to receive something without believing something. But in order to receive something, you, must, you can't go straight to the receiving. You've got to go to the believing line. Are you with me on today? Amen. When you're going to the grocery store, you can't just go up to the cash register, amen, and not take something there with you. Amen. You have to go to the other line first. You have to go where they have the, the, the cornbread, the tuna fish, amen, whatever it is. Amen. You must go there first. And then you go to the checkout. You go to the check. It's the same way in your faith. Before you can receive something, you must first believe something. How can they hear without a preaching? How can he preach except he be sent? The garment of praise is for the spirit of heaviness. Praise works like a magnifying glass. It causes what you're focusing on to get smaller in the sense that it does not mean as much. It magnifies how big your God is, and it takes away how big your problem is. David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. He said in Psalm 34 and 3, he said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. It's absolutely a mistake to try and wait until you don't have any problems or if you wait until there are fewer problems. That's a, that's a vital mistake. That can be a fatal mistake to wait until there are no problems, until all your problems are solved before you give God the praise. You don't praise him after something happened. You praise something while something is happening. You praise him while something is happening. Amen. You have to put on the garment of praise. You have to take off the garment of fear. And you have to put on the garment of praise. You have to take off the garment of doubt. And you have to put on the garment of praise. Praise is one of the great spiritual keys to problem solving. Because it gets your focus back on God who is the problem solver. I said your praise, your praise, your praise will help you not to look at what's bothering you, but your praise will help you to look on the one that can solve what's bothering you. God has promised you the garment of praise in exchange for the spirit of heaviness. Sometimes we come to church or we go through the day and we have a spirit of heaviness and then we take off the spirit of heaviness and put on the spirit or the garment of praise, then after we put on the garment of praise, then we go and put the spirit of heaviness right back on. But when you're going through something and you're heavy in your spirit, you're heavy in your heart, things are bothering you, you have to take on and put on the garment of praise. And then you have to exchange it. Well, the songwriter just put it like this. I see y'all going to make me preach. Amen. Take your burdens to the Lord and do what? Leave them there. Leave them there. And if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. It works like this. When you begin to praise him with a heavy heart, you experience a new sense of hope and a new sense of joy. 
when you praise him. You have to praise him. You can't just think on it. You have to actually do it. You have to put your faith to work and praise God. Can you praise God in a messy situation? You ought to be able to praise God. Amen. You ever known things that get kind of messy? Praise God. Things that you have not brought on yourself. Things just begin to happen and things just begin to start to come in to overwhelm. Praise God. You have to learn how to praise God in those kinds of situations. Through your personal worship, you are reminded that God is bigger than the situation that you face. That he's not only capable of managing your concerns, but he's willing, wanting, and waiting to turn things around. In Psalms 119 and 164th verse of the 119th Psalm, the psalmist wrote, seven times a day I praise you. How many times a day do you praise him? You have to learn how to fill your day with praise. Glory to God. We take coffee breaks. We take tea breaks. Do you ever take a praise break on your job? I'm going to tell the Lord, thank you. Praise God. People come to you and say, are you ready for a coffee break? Praise God. You ought to ask them, are you ready for a praise break? See if they come back real soon. They're not coming back too soon. Praise God. You must begin to praise God because of who he is. Then you have to think on the goodness of God. You have to recall his goodness to you. So you can take off the spirit of heaviness and put on the garment of praise. In our passage of scripture here today in the book of Genesis, Joseph was basically born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He was the son of his father's old age. and He was the apple of his father's eye. Joseph, he really didn't have to work. Uh, he would just run errands for his father. His father would just bless him by telling him, go and check on your brothers. See what your brother's doing. And he would bless him. He really didn't have to work. Joseph wore a coat of many colors. That coat of many colors identified him as the favorite child. Joseph was chosen by God. He was anointed by God. He was favored by God. And Joseph carried a dream that was given to him by God. Joseph was both loved and hated, favored and despised. He desired to be what his father would have him to be. He was a type of the New Testament believer. You're going to be despised. You're going to be rejected at times. But regardless of how things may come, you have to know that you also was born into a kingdom with a silver spoon in your mouth. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, but it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Everything that we have ever needed or will ever need is already provided for us in Christ. In the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, the 13th verse, there we go again. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 3, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Like Joseph, we are anointed. Like Joseph, we're favored. Like Joseph, we have a dream. Like Joseph, we have a divine, God-given destiny. And like Joseph, you have some adversaries to your anointing. I wish I had a little help in here on today. I'm going to have to learn how to play the organ, I guess. So I could just go over there and hit myself with a little chord every now and then. Like Joseph, there are some adversaries to your anointing. There are some adversaries to your dream. There are some adversaries to your favor. The Bible says that Joseph's brothers saw the favor of his father on him. And because of that, they hated Joseph because his father favored Joseph. But the Bible says that they hated Joseph more for his dreams. They even nicknamed him the dreamer. 
Then the Bible says they hated him even more for his words. Because when Joseph began to testify and explain what God had shown him, that anger began to get stronger and stronger. You cannot tell everybody what the Lord is doing in your life. Glory to God. There are some folk that are adversary or adversities to your anointing, to your dream, to your favor. It's a sad fact. Praise God. But the greatest adversaries to your favor, to your dream, and to your destiny can be right up in your family. Glory to God. The greatest adversaries to your dream, your anointing, glory to God, can be on your job. They are the ones who have no dream. They have no vision. They have no passion. They have no fire. Amen. You can be up preaching. Praise God with all of your might. And folk just be looking at you. Let me look around just a minute. Praise God. Uh-huh. Adversaries. Adversaries. Praise God. But when you take on the garment of praise, glory to God, you're satisfied down in your spirit. Glory to God. When you take on the garment of praise, you can praise God even when someone throws you into a pit. His brothers, they were resentful. They criticized him and persecuted him and put him down in a pit. As long as you don't have anything and don't want anything, folk is not going to bother you about your anointing. Praise God. But when people see that you are anointed and you have, praise God, the gift and you have the anointing of God, praise God, you have to know that you have to put on the garment of praise. When you get a vision of your destiny and you get a dream and you start talking about it, people get angry and people become critical and resentful. Praise God. If Joseph would have kept his mouth shut, he could have avoided a lot of hardships. Praise God. But you have to know that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Joseph's words of vision. Joseph's words of expectation. Joseph's words and desires for a higher life exposed the emptiness in his brothers. And they hated him for it. Glory to God. Many times people, uh, they will turn on you and people will talk about you and praise God. All those kind of things. It's not praise God for one reason, but it's for many reasons. Praise God. Sometimes folk don't mind you being kind to them. They just don't want you to be kind to somebody else. Oh, y'all not going to talk to me. I got a revelation on this the other day. Praise. Sometimes people don't want any more from you. They just don't want you to give anything to anybody else. Can I just look over this way right quick? Praise God. Amen. So they conspired to kill Joseph because of his dreams, because of his testimony. They conspired. They planned. They plotted to agree to scheme together, to act in agreement and in secret towards a deceitful and illegal purpose. They conspired. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. I know it's not what you want to hear, but when you're anointed, when you have favor in your life, if you have a God-given dream, you're going to have some enemies. Glory to God. Oh, I heard David say it was good that I was afflicted. But I want you to know that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper because you have the garment of praise. They threw Joseph into a pit. And I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how great your dream is. I don't care how much favor you have on your life. At some time, you're going to experience being put into a pit. Maybe a financial pit. Maybe a pit of sickness. Maybe a pit of depression. But the important thing to know that the pit is not your enemy. Your pit is not your destiny. Glory to God. You cannot sell in the pit. You've got to get up and put on the garment of praise. The Bible says, I'm trying to get to this. Glory to God. But the Bible says that in the book of Genesis, praise God, when Joseph was there and they sent 
for Joseph. The Bible says that Joseph shaved and then he put on some clothes. He changed his garment. He was hopeless at the time. But when they called for Joseph, when he was down in his dilemma, he took off those old clothes of doubt, took off those old clothes of worry, took off those old clothes of pain, and he put on the garment of praise. You see, when you praise God down in the pit, God has a way of turning things around. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. When they put Joseph in the pit, Joseph said, you put me here, but this is not my destination. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. You've got to learn how to praise God. Even down in the pit. They threw Joseph in the pit. And it was empty there. There was no water in it. Somebody said, why you want to praise God when you've been put in the pit? Because the pit could have had water in it. And Joseph could have drowned in the pit that his brothers put him in. So Joseph had to reach and get a garment of praise. What was he going to praise God for? He was not praising God because his brothers envied him. He was not praising God because he had lost the favor of God. But he was praising God because there was no water in the pit. No refreshment in the pit. There was nothing to quench the thirst. No physical, tangible evidence. But there was no water down in that pit that could have drowned him. Sometimes things come upon us. And we say, Lord, why is this happening to me? But as long as you've got breath in your body, you ought to just tell God, thank you. Tell him, thank you. Joseph was in a very dark place. Meaning there was not a single ray of hope to speak of. There was no deliverance. There was no victory. Down in that pit. But one day Judah came by. The praise came along. And he connected with the praise. He connected with his brother Judah. It was Reuben that put him in the pit. But it was Judah that brought him out of the pit. Come on and tell the Lord thank you. I don't care how bad your situation may be. You can still put on the garment of praise. You can praise into the darkness. For the Bible says that weeping may endure for the night. But joy cometh in the morning. Come on and tell the Lord thank you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There's one reason in the Bible that you can praise him for. You can praise him because he sent his son Jesus. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. You ought to praise him right now. Clap your hands. Lift up your voice and tell God thank you. Tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Somebody say, I'm going to praise him when I get a brand new house. It's going to be too late to praise him for that. You need to praise him while you're trying to get the house. Somebody say, I'm going to praise him when my child gets saved. You can't wait till he gets saved to praise him. If you praise him now, he's able. I said he's able. He's able. I said he's able. Before the pit, before you get the money, you got to praise him. Before the bank gets your application, you got to praise him. You got to praise him while you're weak. You got to praise him while you're overwhelmed. You got to praise him while sickness is in your body. You got to praise him in spite of. You got to praise him when nobody else want to praise him. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills and which cometh my help. For all of my help cometh from the Lord. See, yes, I'm talking to somebody now. 
Come on, tell him thank you. Thank him. Because you didn't drown. Thank him. Like Pastor Nelson could have been dead over in the parking lot. But he's still here. Elder Rod, Minister Rod, he had a procedure done. Could have been gone. But I saw him rubbing on his belly this morning. Uh, thanking and praising God for how God brought him through. And say yes. You've got to praise him because you still can open up your eyes. You ought to praise him because you can still hear this message. You ought to praise him because you can move the limbs. You ought to praise him because you're in your right mind. Say yes. Don't give up. You've got to believe and put on the garment of praise. They can take your car. They can take your house. They can take your money. May even take your life. But they can't take your praise. You'll have to surrender your praise. I say the devil can't take your praise. The devil will try to strip you. Joseph had a palace praise while he was still in the pit. I said Joseph had a palace praise while he was still in the pit. Joseph had a palace praise while he was at Potiphar's house. Joseph had a pot of, he had a palace praise even when he was falsely accused and put in prison. He still had a palace praise. I got a letter this week, and the young man is probably listening now. It's in the facilities there in Jackson. Young man from Lansing sent me a beautiful letter. Praise God. Telling me about how the radio station has been a blessing to him while he's doing a two-year sentence there in Jackson. It's worth it all. It's worth it all. Listen, you can be incarcerated and still have a palace praise. You can actually be on a ventilator and still have a palace praise. Ha ha, thank you, thank you, thank you. You can be in divorce court. Glory to God. And the judge won't hear your side at all. And you can still have a palace praise in the presence of your enemies. Glory to God. I don't care what's going on in your life. Don't give up. What you have to do is you have to put on the garment of praise. You may be in a tight place, but you're still anointed. You may be in a dark place, but you're still anointed. You may be fighting back tears right now, but you're still anointed. Your heart may be broken right now, but you still have your anointing. The devil intended for you to die in the pit. When they pushed Joseph into that pit, his brothers thought that was the end of him. Glory to God. But all that did was bring up that palace praise. Glory to God. You may be at the end of your rope. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's coming back from Detroit this morning. They were talking about how so many people are committing suicide. Suicide has risen 300% in the last seven years. Glory to God. Satan is trying to steal your joy. Hallelujah. Trying to take your life. But what Satan sent to crush you God can use to raise you. Did you hear what I said? I said what Satan sent to crush you, God can use to raise you. You have to rejoice when affliction comes, when trials comes, when tribulations come. You have to give God that palace praise. Sometimes you have to look at your conditions. Say that this is just a temporary inconvenience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is just a temporary inconvenience. Inconvenience. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would let me help them today. Glory to God. Glory to God. I know we fight the doctors at times. We, we fight them. But when we get sick, we call them. We call them. Amen. When we go into their office, amen. We don't want to do what they tell us to do. Glory to God. You know, we do the same thing when it comes to the house of the Lord. We have all these problems. We have all these situations. Then when the word comes to help us, we won't let the word help us. Glory to God. But the writer said that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet. And then it's a light unto our path. Glory to God. There's healing in the house. Sister Chapel, when she came up, praise God, to, just to give the welcome. She said, there's, there's healing in the house. I said, Heal, healing is in the house. Healing is the children's bread. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I dare you just to slip those hands up. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Glory to God. But God is looking from you is a palace praise while you're yet in your pit. You can't wait until you get into the palace to praise him. You have to praise him to the palace or you'll never get to the palace. Hallelujah. Right there where the devil said, you're at a hard place, you're at a dark place, you're at a broken place. You're at a place of isolation. Right at that place, you've got to give God a palace praise. You have to lift up your voice and lift up your heads. Oh, ye gates. Hallelujah. Get those hands up. Get those hands up. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. While the anointing is flowing, while the anointing is healing, there's deliverance in the house right now. I often ask the question, why be sick when you can be well? Why be down when you can be up? Why be out when you can be in? Why be lost when you can be saved? Oh, you know, no, no, no. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get those hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the garment of praise. Help us to lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge you. And you promised that you would direct our paths. Lord, I want healing to flow here today in the name of Jesus. I want deliverance to come right now in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of the living God is flowing right now. 